Hey guys, it's Helping Hands here bringing you your next Commander video. This time we'll be going through the OKW Commander Breakthrough Doctrine and we'll be going through units such as the Panzer Fusiliers, the Jagdtiger, the Officier and the two other abilities that the Commander has. So here we have the Breakthrough Doctrine guys. At zero CPs you have access to the Panzer Fusiliers. Also at zero CPs you have access to Breakthrough Tactics. At two CPs you get access to call on the Sturm Officier. At 12 CPs, you get access to the Assault Artillery ability. And finally, at 14 CPs, you get access to the Jagdtiger Tank Destroyer. Hi guys, welcome to your first bit of this video where we're going to be going through the first ability, which is going to be Breakthrough Tactics. So what does Breakthrough Tactics do? Infantry units are trained to push through enemy lines more quickly. Enemy territory is neutralized quickly. It costs 35 munitions, and I'll now show you what happens. So basically... Let's say we're going to capture this sector with a, uh, a stern pioneer. This is the normal capture rate, as you can see it going down now over here, okay? If I was to capture a VP as well, this is the normal capture rate with the stern pioneer squad. You can see that, you know, it's going down at that kind of rate, okay? If we were to then enable breakthrough tactics, so click on this ability. Force advisory. Infantry squads consolidating their assault and pushing into enemy territory. And then we uh, try to take the territory. And you can see that we're decapturing the enemy territory at a lot faster rate. However, the capture rate of the territory isn't increased. So it's only the decapture rate is increased a lot quickly. So again, if we came over here, and if you've got a stern squad trying to capture this point as well, so you can quickly decapture fuel points and munitions points. Because munitions points and fuel points take a lot longer to, um, to cap and decap. And, and, and decap compared to normal strategic points. However, when this ability is active, it does not increase the speed of the Kubel Wagon capping. As you can see, Kubel Wagon yeah. still has its same decap rate, which is still quite fast, but it is it doesn't get a boost. It's only infantry that get a boost from this ability, okay? So this is a good ability to use if you want to quickly rush into enemy lines and uh, try and decap some frontline territory um, at once. Here, guys, I'll just quickly show you that this is the normal decapture rate of the fuel point. Again, turn the ability on and try and go for the cap, but twice as fast. So let's get on to the Panzer Fusilier next. So the Panzer Fusilier, as soon as you pick the commander, they will be ticked here. But you don't call them on off the battlefield. You have to recruit them from your main battle group command headquarters over here. So you go Panzer Fusilier here. They cost 270 manpower and 7 population cap. They are 10 more manpower more expensive than Volks. So let's go call them onto the field now. So we'll make two of these guys. So Panzer Fusiliers, in general, when they first come out, they are a little bit worse than Volk squads. Um, but however, they scale a lot better than Volks into the later game when they get um, G43 upgrades or Shreks. So, first of all, when they come out from the truck, the only ability they have access to is the anti-tank rifle grade ability, which is actually really important because Volk squads when they come out of the base, if I make a Volk squad right now, Volks will not have access to Fausts to be able to snare and destroy light vehicles, whereas Panzer Fusiliers do, which gives them that really big bonus at the early, you know, at the start of a game. So if you're up against a Bren gun carrier or an M3, the anti-tank rifle grenade will, will come in clutch to help you out. And in general, um, the Panzer Fusilier rifle grenade is has a bigger range than the um, than the Volks Fausting ability. And it increases, the, the anti-tank rifle grenade range increases once they get more veterancy. So Panzer Fusiliers have two upgrades. They've got the upgrade with Panzer Shreks for 100 munitions. And eight, for 80 munitions they can upgrade G43s instead. It's either one or the other, okay? Now you can only upgrade these once you've either built your battle group headquarters or your mechanized. So now when your meal mechanized is up, we can then upgrade the Panzer Shreks and the, um, the G43. So we upgrade Panzer Shreks. Okay, like so. So when you upgrade the Panzer Shreks, you get two Panzer Shreks. However, it does lock out the Rifle Grenade Snare ability, as you see. Now, this one does this one does not have it. This one still has it, okay? Now, if we upgrade G43s on this squad, you get three G43s. And you also can upgrade the squad to a sixth man. Like so, you reinforce and you've got a six, six men then, instead of instead of five, okay? So that obviously increases their survivability, their damage output, etc, etc. And they still keep their Rifle Grenade upgrade here. Okay, so obviously Panzer Shreks are going to be good against vehicles. Using the tech there. And they also have, uh, both, both Panzer Fusilier squads have access to the 30 munition standard grenade. So that will just damage infantry, you know, standard grenade, enemy infantry clumped up. That will hurt them. Good, you know, good ability there. Now, when Panzer Fusiliers vet, vet up, they gain access to certain other abilities. So let's give them veterancy one, both of these guys. So with one 
uh, Stripe of Veterancy. They both have access to the Flare ability for 35 munitions. So what does this do? Let me show you. Okay, we haven't got vision over here, so let's drop a flare in the sky like so. And you could do this with multiple squads. So you could put multiple flares in the sky if you wanted to do so. Like so. And this flare will grant you vision. It's like the Soviet sniper flare or the mortar flare that the Soviets get. It basically pops this flare in the sky and you get yourself more vision of, of an area. And this would be really good in conjunction with your Jagdtiger, which we'll talk about later on and, so, and show you how that, that works really well. But in general, you know, it's good to get a flares in the sky to spot your enemy positions so then you know how to proceed to attack an enemy position because then you know how they're set up, right? You don't want to be running in, um, you know, and get yourself suppressed. Try and pop a flare in the sky for 35 munitions to give yourself uh, more warning. Once they get Vision C5, they access the Sprint ability. So normally they run around like this, when they get Vision C5, it costs 50 munitions and then they can activate Sprint and they can run a lot faster and get into the get into the fight. This would be a good idea to activate the ability if you want to rush in to try and get a snare off or maybe rush in to glob a grenade or even just rush in to try and wipe a squad and retreat for instance. You know, the, the sprint ability will definitely come in hand. Or maybe you want, might want to activate sprint to dodge a grenade that's being lobbed at you because you were a bit late to that, react to it. So let's say a grenade was being lobbed or quickly run away, you know, you can dodge it a lot quicker than if you just... Um, you know, if you just backed away like normal. So there's the sprint ability. For 50 munitions, you can get that. And same thing with the Shrek guys. If you want you want to get the sprint, you can close in against the enemy tank faster to get to just get the Shrek the Shreks off. And um, that hopefully might allow you to get in the last fight, the fatal blow onto that enemy vehicle and wipe it because you've activated that sprint ability. Okay? So they're the Panzer Fusiliers. They're probably, in my opinion, guys, the best infantry in the game. So here we have a Vet 5 G43 squad. And you can see, I know this guard squad hasn't got any veterancy, but this is an elite squad, right? And you can see how quickly this uh, G43 squad is making mince me out of this um, uh, out of this guard squad. If you want to, you can always just lob a grenade as well, like so. Finish off the squad behind cover. And we just lost one man there to wipe an entire guard squad. One other thing, guys, is that a G43 squad can still pick up weapons after it's had an upgrade. So if, for instance, on the ground, there was, um, what you maybe your teammate, his grenadier died nearby, and he dropped, uh, or, or flamethrower dropped, or an MG dropped, or a panzer strike, or anything like that dropped, you could pick this up. So I could pick up a flamethrower, but you can only pick up one more item. Right, so this is now a G43 squad with a flamethrower, which is now even super, that would be, oh my god, an amazing squad. Even if they picked up one Shrek, that would be amazing as well. Ideally, what you want to happen is, is if, you know, this panzer fusilier squad drops a Shrek, then you can pick it up. So if, if this squad was to drop a Shrek, it could actually upgrade the G43s again. And then he would be able to have a Shrek and, a, and G43 package, for those who didn't know. Don't know if they're going to patch that out, though. It's unlikely that will ever happen, but it's kind of like an advanced little tip there, if you guys wanted to know that. Is that if they drop, if, if they, for some reason, during a fight, they drop one of the Shreks, they could upgrade their G43s and still retain that Shrek. Or they could, they could buy the, the Shrek that they lost for a reduced cost. Okay? So there the Panzer Fusil is. Let's go on to the Sturm Officer. So if you want to call him the Sturm Officer, he's 280 man power and he costs 8 population caps. So we're going to call him on. So you call him off the battle, you don't recruit him from your truck. So here's the officer. He's a four man squad. We'll get up to five man when he gets veterancy. I'll go through that in a bit. But he has starts, let's go for his abilities first. So he has taught, target them, force retreat, and smoke grenade for 50 munitions. So the smoke grenade, as you know, um, if you've watched other videos, you smoke grenade, you lob a smoke grenade down, and it'll um, block line of sight uh, for the enemy. You can provide cover, and let's say you're getting suppressed, you lob a smoke grenade down, the MG would stop shooting you. And it's a good, you know, it's very cheap ability, and uh, can, you know, can help you out, attack and defense. So the target them ability and the force retreat, let's go show you how those work. So here we have a, a shock squad that's going to push against us. So best to deal with this, you get your officer, you can probably focus them with that ability. And if you focus them with the ability, they'll, the, the enemy squad will drop a lot faster. As you can see, the enemy, the Vision C3 shock troopers actually got melted there in seconds because we activated target them. So allow, allow the enemy units, you know, your, sorry, your units will be a lot more accurate in your shots. So you'll, you'll do more damage to them. So you want to use target them on expensive squads. So let's say you had, a, like, a, in that example, the shock squad was attacking. You'd want to prioritize the shock squad first rather than conscript squad because that's their elite unit. So you want to get rid of that squad first. So always try and make sure whenever you're using... Um, target them. Always prioritize the, the most dangerous squad. So it could be the shocks. It could be a machine gun that's maybe suppressing most of your army. If you want to try and focus that, you could probably wipe it quite quickly. Um, and then force retreat. 
And so basically, let's say you're a, you know, you targeted one shock squad, the second shock squad came in, but you you, you didn't have enough result, you know, you, you didn't have enough men left over to finish that other shock squad off, then you would just force retreat it like so. So let's get another shock squad out. You come over here, you add, you click on the ability, force retreat. So propaganda goes in the sky, and after a couple of seconds, the, the enemy squad is forced all the way back to go back to base. That's 60 munition ability. It's quite expensive compared to the target with them, which says 20 more, more munitions. But it's a great, you know, if you use that on a machine gun, that, you know, that could totally screw up an, uh, your opponent's defensive line, for instance. Um, so make sure you use these abilities uh, when you can. So the Sturm Officer, uh, once he gets veterancy, I'll just now show you what happens when he gets veterancy. So combat, so veterancy one, prepare, for, allows the office abilities to reduce cost. So let's see that now. So we go selection, combat, veterancy one. So his ability is now is 30 munitions instead of 40, and 50 munitions instead of 60. So you get, you know, it's, it's cheaper by 10 munitions on each ability there. So now we retreat him back to base. We can then, once he's got veterans 2, we can then reinforce him. So he gets another over squad, an over, sorry, a noble man onto his squad. So they're kind of elite riflemen, basically. And then when we gave him veterans 3, by leading by his double, the officer is equipped. Oh, sorry, veterans uh, Battle hardened veterans improve their accuracy, so it just makes them better in combat. Veterans 4. Awareness and positioning increasing squad for survivability. So again, just making sure that making them better against, you know, fighting and that kind of thing. And then Vision C5 is the cool one, which gives the officer, the officer start. he only has a Luger, right? A pistol when he starts off with. But once he gets Vision C5, so let's give three more uh, bits of Vision C, he then becomes equipped with an STG, making him a lot better at close quarters combat. So the, 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 the pistol was absolutely garbage, but the STG is quite good. So this squad is now quite effective. And it's also worth noting, the officer squad can also pick up weapons on the ground. So if I was to, um, you know, there was to be a Panzerk or, or an MG on the ground, we could then pick that up. And then the officer then changes his STG over for a, um, for the MG upgrade, basically. He can pick up a second one because he's got two weapon squads. And then that would mean that the other squad, the other man on the squad would get the upgrade. Okay. Now, I'm just going to test something out really quickly here. I want to see if we can, because we don't want the officer to sacrifice his STG if we can help it. So let me just see if I can force make the Ober squad to only pick up the, um, so the Ober men on the squad to only pick up the, the weapons, not the officer. Like, let's try and see if we pick up, he's going to pick that, the main guy. I think the officer will always pick it up first, actually, because he's the lead man on the squad. Let me try something here. Let me try and kill the officer model off and see if that makes a difference. And then let's try and pick the weapon up with these guys instead. Okay, and then let's reinforce the squad fully. Ah, so there you guys go. That's, uh, on, yep. So there you go. I, that's something I learned just now by doing that. So if you, if you put to pick up, if the officer is... The, the officer squad, when he comes onto the battlefield, he's always going to be the lead man of the squad. But if he dies, he can always be reinforced again at the base. But then a new man would then become the lead squad uh, guy, which is this guy. Okay? And that way, you can then have two LMGs on your on your over squad and still keep the SCG on the officer. Me pointing this out is kind of pointless, really, because it's very unlikely, actually, guys, for you ever to find two weapon drops on the battlefield during a match. I'd be very lucky. And, and for the op officer to get it, that would be amazing. But basically, if you wanted to have a, 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 an OP officer, this is how you'd make one, okay? So just in future, if you do have, happen to find lots of drop weapons on the field, try and pick them up in that order so your officer could be the best. Because if you pick them up with the officer himself, he would lose the STG and pick up the gun. But you'd rather, you know, you want your, your Opus guys to have the MGs instead because they're using rifles, the, just car 98s, which aren't as good as an STG, basically. So hopefully that makes that makes sense to you. And that's the officer squad. Okay, so let's move on to the last, the uh, second to the last thing on the commander, which is assault artillery. Assault artillery costs 200 munitions and it drops a lot of artillery shells and then it's followed by a smoke barrage. So it's a good thing to drop on the enemy position and then once it's done... When the smoke starts landing, then would be a great time to push up with your army, okay? So I'll just show you what it does. So let's say you had an enemy position here, and you and you wanted to attack it, so you would drop the assault artillery in the rough area. Check the mini-map as well. You can see there's a target area over there on the bottom left-hand side. So anything inside that immediate area is going to get uh, potentially artillery. The artillery rounds in the centre are quite accurate, but they are scattered around the outside, as you'll now see. So in general, in the center, it's quite accurate, but you do have some artillery rounds that are going to be dropping around the sides. As you can see, there's one round over here, and a couple of scattering around the outside. But generally, in the center, it does the most damage, but then here comes the smoke barrage. 
like so. So then, you know, with the smoke barrage in effect, it, you know, it block line of sight, your troops when they're attacking, they wouldn't be seen. So you could, if you had lots of good close range infantry, you could get up in your opponent and, and wreck face. Um, so yeah, that's the assault barrage ability. Just again, so drops a lot of artillery, it, you know, where it, in the center of it, there's some scatter rounds on the outside. So if you're, if you're, if someone's dropping this artillery ability on you, just make sure, if you, if you don't want to get hit by it, make sure you're, you're out of that target area again. So you drop the RT here, you can see the target zone, so you probably, even over here, you probably might get hit by the artillery. So you want to make sure you're over here to avoid getting hit by the artillery. So you need to try and either max, immediately retreat, there's a long drop time as well, as you can see, there's like a five second, at least a five second delay before the artillery drops, and you do see, do see red flares as well. So if, you're, if this is being, if it's being used on you, you should have plenty enough time to retreat away and pull away from it. And also one other thing, you guys, you need vision to be able to drop this artillery. If I was to put, put on Fog of War right now, and uh, I was to put the, put the, uh, try and put the Assault Artillery ability back on, I can't do it. So I yeah, click on the ability, the Fog of War's there. I can't drop the artillery because the Fog of War has been enabled. So as long as I've, so my teammate drops recon run, the artillery will keep happening, okay? Or if I, as long as I've got vision of the area, I can keep uh, uh, um, using, uh, this ability would, would keep being active, okay? So that is the assault artillery ability. And finally, let's go on to the last unit you have in the game, which is the only commander in the game to have this, which is the Jagdtiger. So to call on the Jagdtiger, you need 720 manpower, 260 fuel, and you also need Panzer Authorization. So what is that? So Panzer Authorization is you need your um, Schwerpanzer headquarters built. So you'd call on your truck. Our supply half truck is in action. Standing like by so. the setting of command post. Advance to that position. You would then set up your Schwerpanzer headquarters. You first need either mechanized or battle equipment before you can do that. Fortunately, we already have mechanized built, so we can just build this straight away. I wouldn't ever recommend building your Schwer in your base. You'd normally want to have it covering a point like a munitions point, so it's being because it's a, uh, a defensive structure. But for this training purposes, we'll just build it in the base. So there it is; it's getting built there. So now we then need to then buy this ability for 100 manpower and 60 fuel. 60 fuel. Once we've done that, the Jagdtiger then becomes available available to call onto the battlefield. So then we're going to call that on. So the Jagdtiger is the best tank destroyer in the game. It is very slow and it has a fixed turret means it can only shoot from the front if it wants to shoot an enemy to behind itself it has to rotate its whole its whole self around but the egg can be upgraded with engine improvements so this is its normal speed the 16 munitions we can upgrade its engine that'll make it a little bit faster a little bit more mobile which is good so i would always recommend that always upgrade this ability when you can afford to do so and uh, you can probably hold fire with the egg so it doesn't shoot and you can have it prioritizing uh, tanks like most vehicles you, do, you activate this ability. So you bombard, you activate the ability. And uh, this, these abilities are HE, so they'll be very effective against infantry. So you just generally want to activate this ability and bombard an area. So let's restart that ability. Let's go and put down some enemy infantry. So let's say let's say you're up against um, enemy this gun, right? That was you know that's normally the counter to the Jagdtiger. But if you were smart, you could then act this to make this an enemy enemy unit quickly. Okay, so first thing, we can't see this, this, this gun, right? We didn't want to, we don't, we don't, you don't know where it is. Let's say we didn't know where it is, but we knew there was a this gun in the area. How would we deal with it with the Jagdtiger? So you can either blindly fire with the supporting fire and hope to get it, which is not a good idea, or you could use the Panzerfusilier flare ability to spot the enemy position, like we were talking about earlier. So this would be great in conjunction, because the Jagdtiger can shoot a lot further than it can see, okay? So we're going to pop it in the sky like so. Flare now, now we know where the Jagd, the, uh, the, the this gun is. We're going to activate the supporting fire onto the Zis gun. And now, these HE rounds are going to be quite effective against killing this Zis gun. As you can see. It's also damaging the health of the, uh, the vehicle as well. The vehicle health is actually going down by quite a lot. Um, so you might even be able to, once you know, the Jagdtiger might be able to destroy the vehicle entirely there. Okay, so this ability here actually, uh, it's a timed action. Enables the main gun projector to pierce through any world object at the cost of rate of fire. So let me show you what this does. So let's come over here with this Jagdtiger. So here we have the Jagdtiger. We have a house in the way and a shed. And we need to try and hit this uh, SU-85. So if we had, let's say we popped the uh, flare in the sky and we wanted to hit it, we activate the APC shells and we would then make this enemy enemy tank. And the Jagdtiger, then shoot through both the freaking shed and the, um, the house here to hit this vehicle, as you can see. 
It, however, its rate of fire is significantly decreased. So, it just ignores the entire building here that's in the way. Normally, it wouldn't be able to hit it. Okay. So if I was there, you know, so let's do the same thing again. Let's put an enemy tank here. We took the egg ticket and hit it. It wouldn't hit it this time around because it would have to go around and get a clear line of sight. But then if we did, you know, if we had the vision again, we just pop that. Activate the availability. Shoot it. Like so. There you go. Uh, okay, guys, I just want to show you one more example of this uh, ability with the penetration shot through all types of uh, objects. It can also penetrate through this big shrubbery. So as you can see, a normal shell will not go pet will not penetrate through this big clump of bushes here. Uh, but if we were to activate this ability, the APC BCHE shells, and start firing through it, you'll see the shell will go through the ground, go through go through the bushes, and uh, come out on the other side. So you know you can go through all types of bushes, any any type of terrain you can penetrate through with this ability. So one more thing about the Yagtiga guys, because it is very slow and it's very vulnerable to being flanked, you always want the Yagtiga supported with lots of other things. You can't just make a Yagtiga and then that's your whole AT sorted, because if, all it takes is for one T-34 to get behind the Yagtiga and the Yagtiga will die. Because the Yagtiga is just, you know, it can't revert, you know, it's too slow, it, you know, all, all it's taking is the T-34 to keep circling around it and the Yagtiga wouldn't be able to do anything about it. It's just too slow and immobile. So you always want to be supporting this unit. So a good good play would be to have the Jagdtiger, you know, your infantry in front like this. So the infantry spotting its flanks, making sure that nothing is going to flank in. You probably have mines on your flank, your flank routes that around around the side of the Jagdtiger, and you also maybe have a raketin or two there to back it up. So if it does ever get flanked, you have the raketin the weapons there to support the Jagdtiger. And again, like, don't have it on the front line. This unit is, I think, treat this as a sniper. You will never have your sniper on the front line, right? You always want it at the back of your army. And slowly pushing forward with as your as the front line um, either goes forward or reverse it back when the when the front line goes back basically. So always have it, you know, there and always try and put position the Yagtiga in big open spaces. If it's got things blocking it, vision like this hedgerow here blocking it, the Yagtiga won't automatically shoot through that bush unless you activate this ability. Now again, this ability is expensive; it's 70 munitions to do it. Okay, so make sure, like I say, you have the Yagtiga in a big open space but well protected. And then that's how the best to use a Yagtiga. Don't have it like, you know, if you, on this map, this map, Brody, it's a 4 4 map. I like this map. It's a custom map. You have to download it off the, off the workshop. Um, the Yagtiga on this map would be good in the center. I wouldn't generally, I wouldn't have it on the flanks here or the far left because then it would only, it wouldn't be covering much. It would only be covering a small portion of the map. Where if you have it in the center, it's cut, it can either swing easily left or swing easily right um, to be able to defend, um, you know, the map. So generally have this unit like in the center of the battlefield but at the back of the center, if that makes sense. So guys, there you have it. So build order for this commander, I would recommend maybe going for uh, Volk squad. So you, so you, you start with your Stern Pioneer squad. So I'd probably go Stern Pioneer squad, Volk, Panzer Fusilier, Panzer Fusilier, maybe a third run. Why would you make a Volk in this build? Because you, your Panzer Fusiliers can't make cover. So you use the Volk squad to build yourself some cover. And then you can use, then your Panzer Fusiliers can then have, got, they can have cover. Which is good. And also because Volk squads in the early game are better than Panzer Fusiliers. So you might want to get you know, a couple of Volks. So you could go double Panzer Fusiliers, double Volk squad. That's not a bad build. And then I would, depending on your AT capability, if you've got a couple of Raketten Weapons, we've got a Raketten Weapon out, I'd probably upgrade, you know, I would probably prioritize going G43s over Panzer Shreks. Because G43s are, are just, you know, you know, they've got more survivability. They're really good against, once these guys vet up and you keep them alive, they become the, generally the best infantry in the game, um, in terms of the late game. And then, yeah, maybe like one Raketten Werfer. With this kind of commander, I'd probably want to pick going uh, Mechan... Uh, sorry, Battle Group Headquarters. So I'd probably want to go for... I'd probably want to go for this. Now, why would I go for this? Because I want to get free healing. Okay, I want medics for free. Um, so, well, sorry, you don't get medics for free. You have to pay for them, obviously. You pay 100 man pound, 15 fuel to get medics. But that means you haven't got to be investing munitions in dropping these medical supply boxes back at base. Because if you go for mechanized, you have to go for, to get to get healing for your troops. You have to go for this, and you want to be spending that munitions in upgrading your Panzer Fusiliers, not having to heal them. So generally, going for the battle group headquarters is better than going for mechanized if you're going for a Panzer Fusilier build. Also, because it's cheaper in terms of fuel cost, 
um, and the bad group and then the mechanized and this allows you to get tier 4 out faster and that will then lead to getting a Yag Tiger out faster as well in the later stages of the match. So yeah, so two folks, one Stern Pioneer, a uh, Raketa Maybe go, maybe, um, you know, get the LEIGs out to counter indirect fire units. Get yourself a Black half trick out if you want a, some, a suppression unit. You can always go for yourself a machine gun as well. Um, if you don't fancy going for the Black half trick, you can go for a machine gun. And then you get your Schwer, pull out your Schwer near, a, you know, covering a good point, like a, a munitions point, but I don't have it too far, for, far forward. Um, and then maybe go, first probably go for yourself for a Panzer IV before going for the Jagdtiger, but because... A uh, Jagdtiger costs a lot of CPs. It's 14 CPs. Um, and that, you know, by the time you get those CPs out, you've probably got and maybe 300 fuel. So you probably can afford to get yourself a Panzer IV out and then go for something like the Jagdtiger. Okay. And generally, guys, in T I would only ever use this commander in team games. In 1v1s, the Jagdtiger costs too much resources. Um, do not, you know, it, it's you're much better off going for like, having yourself a Panzer IV and a Panther than going for one Jagdtiger. Because again, the Jagdtiger is slow, it's immobile. It can only control one part of the battlefield uh, at one time, generally. And um, on lots of obi one maps, there's lots of um, lots of ways to flank and there's lots of houses and lots of shot blockers. So it'd be better off having more vehicles out in, in, in 1v1s than, than, um, than just having the Jagdtiger. It's just, and also because it's just so slow. You know, it'll take it forever to do anything, you know. But with a team game, um, there's more things for it to shoot at. There's lots more armor to shoot at. You've got more support from your teammates as well. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend making, choosing this commander for 2v2s and up. And there you guys have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to follow, subscribe. And uh, please, if you can afford to, please check out my Patreon. As uh, I'm trying to, trying to start to put out more good content like this uh, for you guys. And uh, I need your support. So thank you very much, guys, and I'll catch you next one. Bye-bye.